Hey everyone, it's now the middle of October, so I've got to ask, how did everyone enjoy their free six-month trial to the New World Order? On the Corona front, there's now the three-tier system. And all things, of course, are about as made up and as opaque as the 33 tiers of Freemasonry. How's that going, by the way, these days? Presumably less handshaking, thanks to COVID. And none of those weird midnight ceremonies, what with a 10pm curfew. But anyway, the big story this past week was in France, where a history teacher was decapitated by a terrorist, which I guess only goes to show the dangers of using a classroom practical to teach kids about the French Revolution. The situation actually occurred after the teacher taught a lesson about free speech that involved bringing out cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Cartoons which I chose not to replicate this week, partly out of fear of reprisals, but also partly because being Scottish there is a slim chance that I'm indeed one of those immortal people out of the movie Highlander, and Sean Connery laid it on pretty firm about the rules of the game and not losing your head. Anyway, to the news story itself, facts are a bit thin in the ground how it exactly went down or if the teacher put up much of a fight, although it is the French we're talking about here, so probably not. But the Teaching Association has since reiterated that it's important to discuss tough subjects, though, and to which I would respond that they're already teaching all the lessons in French. That must make it pretty hard already. It is worth noting that this week's incident is but the tip of an iceberg, though, of underlying tensions in France that seem to be covered up remarkably well, aside from when it spills into international news by way of the internet. The fire earlier this year at Nantes Cathedral, for instance, was portrayed by many outlets as a tragic accident, which it 100% wasn't. There is a level of denial and complicity at play here akin to when the Titanic hit the iceberg, and many people's reaction was to add some of the ice to their gin and tonic. Crossing the pond, or the other big news story this week was out of America, where there's only a few weeks to go until voting day, and a few weeks Joe Biden was odds-on to win. Now Trump is even money, and Joe Biden's not so much odds-on as just odd. And this was all compounded off the back of a major news story about how Biden's son has been up to his eyeballs in corruption, with links to Ukraine, China, and Joe himself was even offered shares in a multi-million dollar business venture as part of a negotiation that pretty much involved him being in the room and occasionally name-dropping President Obama. You know, I didn't think any candidate could ever out-Clinton the Clintons, but the Democrats really went hardball this year, it seems. None of this, of course, will change any supporters' minds. To paraphrase Mr Trump a few years ago, Joe Biden could stand sneezing and coughing in the middle of Fifth Avenue and not lose one voter. However, the story will be a decisive blow for the argument that, quote, all politicians are the same. While Trump and Biden represent two vehemently polarising political parties, both candidates are remarkably similar in their personal life, whether it be murky business dealings, age, health, or accusations of not being woke enough in a world where, frankly, nobody even knows what the definition of that is on a day-to-day -day basis. What is known, though, is that a reduced turnout will benefit the president albeit at the polling station and not at his currently closed casinos where he's probably losing money faster than any of his punters ever did. Anyway, only a few weeks to find out how it works out for him. See you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.